so you should have a, a link to the tutorial already. Um, GitHub should be in, in the uh, containers uh, channel. I think it's in general as well. So I'll just share my screen. Here we go. Um, so we'll start with the um, first section, uh, getting started. Um, so we're just going to go uh, through some basics of Docker and um, Singularity first, um, just to get you uh, used to using them. And um, at the end, then we'll look at doing um, an assembly of shovel, <coughs> both uh, uh, with Docker and then a singularity. Um, right, so so uh, to start off with, I'm gonna make my uh, own directory and my name, call it Anna Work. I suggest you do this on your VM as well, because remember there's two of you to uh, VM sharing the same user, so make your own directory uh, with your name ideally uh, to do your work in, to stop uh, overwriting uh, the other person's work by accident. Uh, out of interest as well, um, for those of you not used to using Conda, uh, this is what I meant earlier by uh, um, Conda being initialized correctly. You'll, you'll know if Conda's initialized because you'll see the little um, base environment there in the corner. So that's just what that looks like. Um, so uh, the first thing we're going to look at is how to uh, pull Docker images uh, from Docker Hub. Um, so Docker Hub is probably what you'll mostly interact with for pulling images and um, the command in general uh, takes the form docker pull, then we have the repository name uh, and the tag. Um, so the tags are what used uh, to pull different versions of images. Um, so if you don't specify a tag, then Docker will default to pull in the latest version of an image. Um, so the first image we're going to pull uh, is uh, just an image for the Debian OS. Um, so first let's just see what it looks like um, searching for uh, an, a Docker Hub for an image on the command line. So to do this, we do the Docker search command, and then we just have our search term. So in this case, we're looking for Debian. And uh, this is the result we get back. So you've seen a, a list of um, the available Debian images on Docker Hub. And um, the ones we're interested in is uh, these uh, top two images here. These are the um, uh, official uh, Docker images. You can see they've got the little OK uh, tags for official here. And so, yeah, we're looking to pull uh, the image for Debian, this official one here. Um, you can see others listed as well that have been built by other users uh, sort of for different tasks. Um, when you pull in things like containers for operating systems or programming languages or so forth, um, I advise you look for these official images, which would always come out at, uh, as the top result. Um, just so you know, you know, sort of what you're, you're downloading, that you're not uh, downloading some random image that you don't know what's in it. So look look for the official ones. Um, so we're going to pull the latest Debian uh, image first. Um, so just to note, there are, again, there's two of you on the same VM under the one account. So only one of you actually needs to pull each image. Um, so you can both run the Docker pull command, but um, only the first person to run it will see it downloaded. Um, the second person to run the command will then just, it'll just tell you that you know some the image is already there. Um, so let's show you what this looks like. So we want to do Docker pull Debian. So there's no tag there, so it'll default to latest, or equivalently, we could write Debian with the tag colon latest. So that is the same command. Uh, it'll always pull the latest image. Um, 
equivalently so this latest tag it just um it's set by the people maintaining uh, the repository but it's it's um default to the latest version of the software the latest version of the operating system so you could um at the time i'm speaking uh, the latest tag also um maps to debian bullseye which is the latest version of the debian os so i could also put debian bullseye in there and that's that would be the same image again um so let's pull the image so if you're the first person to pull you should see it downloading uh the image for you and uh so if, if you're the second person who pulls the image on the VM, then it'll just look like this. Where it just tells you that the image is up to date. So it's already been downloaded. <laughs> so we can also uh, try uh, pulling uh, older versions of uh, Debian. So we can pull um, an older version of the OS uh, called Casper. Um, so that's good. Look like this, you can jump off the pull our repository name, which is Debian. And we want to pull uh, the tag called Buster. And um, so, yeah, then to see a list of um, downloaded images on your machine so you know what images you already have um you run the uh, docker images command so if you run docker images okay so i've got a few here that i downloaded previously but you'll see these two here uh debian buster and debian latest so it gives you the repository name the tag an id for your image um, it tells you when it was created, so that was when it was uh, uploaded to Docker Hub, and gives you the size of the image as well. Um, so we're now going to take a look at um, how to run a Docker container. Uh, so we're going to use the latest uh, Debian image for this. Um, so to run a command with a docker container, it's the docker run command. And uh, then we have uh, the name of our image. So we can either just write Debian or we can Debian latest, either's fine. And then we put the command that um, we want to run in our container. Um, so I'm going to uh, tell Docker to run the command echo hello from Docker. Um, so this will uh, output the text uh, hello from Docker to the console. So if I run this, see it's printed. Uh, hello from Docker. So what's happened here is um, Docker has spun up um, the uh, Debian container. It's ran the command echo hello from Docker, uh, Docker and uh, exited. So that's just a simple example of uh, how to run a command with Docker. Um, so there's uh, other things we do as well. Um, so by using um, the INT flags, we can uh, attach uh, uh, um, uh, the bash shell um, within the container and we can run more commands. Um, so we'll see what that looks like. Do docker run command again, this time with the INT flags. Uh, the name of our image, so Debian. And uh, yeah, then we want our command to run. We just want a bash shell. So we run this. You see this command prompt is opened up here. Um, this is telling us that we're 
uh, root user as well. Um, so we're now um, uh, in, inside the container, so we no longer have to use that docker run command. We can just interact um, with the container on the command line as, as we normally uh, would. So, so for example, we can uh, run ls. See, we've got the file system of the container listed here. That's what this is. And um, can have a look around. CD to bin. And take a look what's in here. See a list of the commands available to us uh, in the container that have been installed. And there's other things we can take a look at as well. Go back to the top level. Um, you can also take a look and see what the uh, operating system um, of a container is. So if we do cat, cat in etc. The OS release. That will show us. Um, uh, the OS, so you can see that it's um, Debian Bullseye because uh, we're running the latest Debian um, version, which uh, points to the Debian Bullseye container. Um, we can also do things like um, create new files within our container. So if we use the touch command to create a new file, so we do touch. Text. The ls again, you can see that it's created the file here. Um, but uh, once we exit this uh, container, um, this file won't persist. So this file won't, won't be on our uh, host, host machine on our VM. So with Docker, the, the way you sort of have to handle um, the sort of creation of files or the input and output of files is to use volumes. And we'll see how to do this um, later when we, we do a assembly with a uh, shovel. So if I exit the container, exit command, see we're back to our command prompt. And if I do ls here, you can see there's nothing in the directory of uh, file, my uh, file.txt uh, only existed in the container. <laughs> it doesn't persist uh, once we exit the container. And uh, there's lots of different options um, for the docker run command. Most of them you'll probably um, never use, but so if you want to find out more about docker run, just take a look at docker run help function. And that gives you uh, quite a fair of all the things you can do. So most of which you probably won't ever use, but the, the information's there for you to take a look at. Um, so next thing we're going to take a look at is um, uh, the docker ps command. And um, that will show you all the containers that you have um, currently running. So if you run docker ps minus a, so you can see here um, I have the uh, two containers. Um, if there's two of you working on the uh, VM at the same time, you might see that there's four containers if you've both been uh, running the commands that I've uh, shown. So you can see at the bottom um, this uh, first command I ran, the echo, hello from Doctor, from Docker, uh, created five minutes ago and exited five minutes ago. So the container's been stopped. It's got a name for the container here as well. <laughs> and then you can see uh, the bash command I ran as well created four minutes ago and exited about one minute ago and the name. Um, so um, these are sort of abandoned containers essentially, and they're just, they're using up disk space. They're not doing anything. We, we want to delete these containers um, once we're finished with them. 
Um, so we can do that with the uh, Docker um, RM command, or uh, we can remove uh, all, all stock containers at once using uh, Docker container prune. Uh, so um, if we try uh, Docker RM first, RM, so we then specify either our container ID or the name of the uh, container. So let's remove one of these. Obviously, that the name of the containers will be uh, different from uh, your system. And if we run Docker, yes. A again. See that that container has been removed. Um, then if you wanted to say you had several stock containers you wanted to remove, then you could remove them uh, all at once um, using the Docker container command. Looks like this. So it's going to be a warning message, this warning you that this, this is going to remove all your stock containers. So you just say yes, you want to continue. And it'll uh, delete uh, all the containers for you. Um, so once again, obviously, there's two of you on the same VM. So the first person uh, to run Docker container prune will see the uh, containers um, removed. The second person will probably see nothing removed. Um, there's also an older equivalent command you might come across if you're reading uh, tutorials or documentation on Docker, uh, which looks like this to show you. <coughs> Where it's using Docker RM, and you're just feeding it a list of the uh, container IDs using Docker PS minus AQ. So Docker PS minus AQ just lists all the container IDs. So it's just a, um, an old, older way of deleting containers um, before Docker container prune came into being in later versions of Docker. But it does the same thing as Docker container prune. Uh, so similarly, you can remove uh, an image as well. Um, so if we list our images again, uh, images. And uh, if we remove our uh, Debian uh, butter, uh, image, uh, so it will do command for removing an image as Docker RMI for image. And uh, yeah, we want to put the um, name of the repository and the tag. So the name is Debian. And then uh, the tag is Buster, it's the Buster run one to remove. So we run that. It's telling us it's untagged Debian Buster. So we run Docker images again. You can see that the Buster image has now been uh, removed and we just got uh, Debian latest. So you probably notice that there's a lot of cleanup involved here of Docker containers, um, remembering to remove these stops, Docker containers at the end. Um, so there is uh, also a flag for the uh, docker run command, uh, the rm flag that will tell docker to remove the container um, uh, once it's finished running. Um, so if we uh, run our same command as uh, before, the uh, hello, uh, from Docker echo command, if we do Docker run, uh, this time specifying the RM flag. Uh, we want to use the Debian image, uh, Debian latest. Then we have our command, same as before, echo. Hello from Docker. We run this. You can see that uh, hello from Docker has been printed to the console again. But uh, this time, what's happened is when uh, after Docker stopped the container, 
it will remove it for you. So if we run Docker PS and A again uh, to see our list of containers, you'll see us uh, should see there's no uh, containers there because it's, um, it's it's deleted the container for you. So it's done the cleanup. So it's it's uh, it's a useful thing to remember. This remove flag um, saves you having to do a lot of cleanup of your containers. Um, okay, so hopefully everyone's kept up with that. Um, so if we take a look at singularity uh, next, and we'll go through some of the basics of singularity, and we see uh, how it's different from Docker. So um, Again, I'd say there's two of you working at the same VM, uh, you know, make sure you're working uh, in a sort of directory under your name to avoid clashing with the other person. Um, so as mentioned uh, previously, Singularity can pull images from uh, lots of different registries. So um, the first thing we can look at is uh, pulling an image from the uh, Scilabs container registry and what that looks like. So um, similarly to Docker, we have a singularity pull command. Uh, this time we need to tell um, singularity what registry um, it's pulling from. So uh, we're using Scilabs, so that's just called library. And then uh, again, as before, we have our uh, repository name and we can add a, a tag as well. Um, so we're gonna pull the uh, lol cow, cow uh, image, scilab. And uh, if we don't specify a tag, it will uh, default to pull in. Uh, the latest image. So you can see it's um, built this uh, SIF, uh, downloaded this uh, SIF image file for us. You can see it's uh, got the latest tag here. And we can also pull images from Docker Hub as well. Um, so let's pull uh, the Debian image that we um, pulled before um, and see what that looks like. So it's singularity pull again. Uh, this time we want to look at uh, Docker Hub, Docker registry. And we'll pull with Debian latest. Okay, seems to have got stuff. Okay. Um, it's probably one more time. Might be a problem that Debian's reached their limit for the Debian image for the day, because uh, it's possibly it's a um, uh, free repository, in which case it's only got a limit of 100 calls a day. That might be what's happened here. You might be seeing the same message, I'm not sure. Try key, uh, Robert's saying. Yeah, everyone's coming back and saying it's uh, <laughs> it's rejecting it. Okay, don't, That's don't, all right. don't, don't worry about it. Ed. Um, we don't uh, we don't need it for this. But anyway, so yeah, what what what's happened is um, free repositories on Docker um, have a limit of a hundred pulls a day, and probably because we're all pulling the same image, we've um, we've reached that that limit. So this is one of the reasons why um, a lot of software has moved into the key registry to um, avoid these Docker. Um, 
pool limits. <laughs> so that's what's happened uh, there. Um, anyway, let's let's um, let's hopefully yeah. So the lol cow image yes should have uh, downloaded fine. So let's um, let's have a go at running that. <laughs> um, so we just seen the command uh, Docker run. So um, the command singularity run is a little bit different in that it invokes the run script of container provided um, whoever's built the image has set a run script. So we try singularity run. Uh, log out latest and we'll see uh, what happens. So um, this uh, runs the run, run script um, for this image, uh, which I think you know, produces a like a fortune for you. So you'll probably see in different uh, uh, quotes uh, to this. And um, if we want to run a custom command then with this container, uh, we have to use the singularity exec command. So that looks like this. And uh, we're going to run the command, how say. So this time uh, you should all do the same thing with the cow saying move. So that's um, yeah to run a, a custom command with singularity. It's singularity exec, not singularity run. Uh, is the um, important thing to remember there. Um, we can also. Uh, start a shell in the container like we did uh, with Docker. So if you cast your mind back uh, to the uh, Docker run uh, uh, command, the IT flag and bash um, to do something that is in singularity, we use the uh, singularity shell command, our image name. And this starts a, a shell in the container for us. Um, so you can see this singularity prompt here. So um, if we try doing the same sort of thing we did before with Docker, if we, if we run ls, you can immediately see a difference. So this time, what we're seeing is um, the files in our current working directory uh, on, our, um, on our VM that we launched our con uh, container shell from. So um, essentially what's happening here is um, what Singularity does for you is it binds um, some of the directories from your host machine to the container. So this includes your home directory. Um, so just to prove that we are actually in the container, let's um, check what the OS is like we did before. We're looking except for the OS release. And uh, it's telling us it's Ubuntu uh, 18. So that is the OS of the container. That's not the OS of your VM. And um, so this time we can also uh, create a file within our container. But this time it's going to persist <coughs> once we exit the container. So if we try to touch my file.txt again, we just create this blank file. Let's see our file there. And um, if we exit uh, the container now, and we can see it back to our uh, command prompt list again. You can see this time that uh, my file.txt has persisted uh, outside our container. So this is. Uh, you know, useful feature of singularity that this bind mount it does of your um, 
home directory is, is, is very useful in terms of interacting with uh, files and um, so it sort of makes things a bit easier for beginners as well rather than with Docker. We, um, you have to use Docker volumes, which we'll see how to um, uh, use next to handle the input and output the files. Um, there is a link on the GitHub a bit more about how Singularity binds directories. So if you're really interested in the theory, you can go take a take a look at that. But you, you don't really need to understand hugely how it works. The theory behind it, you just sort of need to know how uh, Docker and Singularity differ in the way they interact with files. Um, right, okay. So I think we can move on to trying to assemble a genome uh, using Docker. Um, is everyone okay? Is anyone horribly lost? Or is apart from the problem with pulling the, pulling the Debian uh, container, is everything okay? I'm not seeing anything in the chat really on it. I think everyone's all right. Okay, so hopefully we're happy to move on. I'll give people a minute because you can see people typing. <laughs> uh, there's a question. Can you set up a home directory, a home in Docker like Singularity has? I think you can. I think Docker can use bind mounts. I've never tried it. But I think Docker is more designed to use volumes, which I realize is, is, is a, I haven't really introduced it much as a concept yet, but you will see how it works in this next bit now of how Docker handles input and output with volumes. Another question is, do you have to be in the same directory as the SIF file for this to work, as in you enter the container? Um, as in entering the container, uh, I think, can you give the path? I think you can give the path to the container. I'm not sure. I, I actually tried. Yeah, to, I think so. I, I think path. you can just give the path. It should be fine, but let's have it. Let's, let's try it out. Why not? That's <laughs> the worst that could happen. Well, <laughs> um, yeah, so let's try. Yeah, so yeah, you, you can just give the path. Um, as well, the way it um, mounts your um, home directory. So if you don't know what I mean by home directory, it's this, that's your home directory. Um, that when you're giving, um, when you're sort of running your, your command in, in Singularity, uh, you can sort of, you know, access, Singularity can access files that are outside your current uh, working directory as long as they're within your home directory. Yeah, that looks like it. I'm not seeing any other questions. Um, okay, so let's have a go with um, sending a genome with Docker then. Um, thankfully, uh, we're pulling the image from key, so I don't think there should be any restrictions of how many times we pull the image. Um, so, uh, yeah, we're going to pull the image um, for uh, uh, back to a similar um, software called Shovel. Um, there's a link in the uh, GitHub. Uh, to the GitHub page for Shovel, and that's actually where you can find out about, um, uh, you know, where you pull the uh, Shovel image from. Um, so yeah, we're going to pull uh, from the key registry using Docker. So we're going back to our Docker pull command, and then the uh, repository name. So we're putting key in front this time because we're pulling from key and the repo name and we'll specify latest tag as well 
So you can either put latest tag on the end, meet like that, it's their equivalent. So let's try pulling that. So this one has quite a few uh, layers to it, so it'll take a bit longer to uh, uh, download and extract. Uh, so we have to do Docker images once that's done. See the double image there. Um, uh, we're also going to grab some uh, reads to assemble um, from the uh, ENA. So yeah, I'm going to have to use the uh, uh, copy paste uh, open clipboard thing to do this. So I think this is a first for me as well. So um, I'm gonna uh, copy the uh, link that's on the uh, GitHub. And then I'll uh, open my clipboard. and uh, paste it here. And uh, yeah, then I can paste it on the uh, command prompt. Let's control shift B. Um, so is everyone okay with that? Can everyone is everyone all right with using clipboard um, to paste the command? Let's see. Everyone's saying that uh, the extraction is uh, that's taking them a while to pull from key. Okay. Yeah, it will, it will take a while. I'll, I'll pause for a minute then. Give people a chance to catch up. Yeah, everyone's pulling at the moment. We're probably uh, just casually doing a yeah, denial probably, of service on. on was it all sorts of problems? <laughs> It might be seeing us all coming from the same IP and just saying like, nope, <laughs> slow down. So Shovel does have a lot of uh, dependencies, so it does have to uh, pull in a fair bit.
Uh, one point uh, someone brought up is if you've at the beginning said uh, you've allowed the website access to your clipboard, so it has a little thing allow or disallow permission at the at the start when you first open the VM, and you've said allow, you may be able to just paste, um, copy and paste like like you would anywhere else. You may not. You may have to go to uh, may do have to do what Anna just did, but yeah, you may be able to just paste directly as well. Has anyone actually managed to download the uh, shovel image or is everyone still going? Anna, I, um, I, I put my code in before you and yours downloaded in seconds and mine's still going. So I, I, don't, know, I don't know how you managed to do that. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> One person has it. It is taking a while by the looks of things. So we might have to give it five minutes or so. Oh yeah, someone says they're running the assembly and that will take a while. Yeah, that, that will take about 15 minutes probably. Well, maybe we can press on a bit. Yeah. Um, it's yeah, starting I, I, to come through for people. Yeah, I mean, everything's on the GitHub. So if, if you miss anything I'm going through on screen, it's, it's the same commands on the, on the GitHub that you can follow along there. So if I uh, download the... Hopefully those should be quite quick to download at least, but we'll see. Um, so um, we're going to uh, take a look at uh, running the shovel container of Docker uh, next. So there's a few uh, sort of test commands we can run just to get uh, used to things. So uh, it's our Docker run command again. Uh, name of our image. And uh, then the command we uh, want to run. So we run uh, double check, and this just checks uh, all the dependencies. Uh, have been installed in a on path. We should see it's following uh, to the terminal. Um, so this is a, one of the reasons it's uh, taking so long to sort of download and build. There's a lot of dependencies uh, with uh, shovel. It's a lot of software in there. And uh, can also try running a shovel help command as well. Drop a run again image name. And then our command will do uh, help. 
uh, start to run the software. This is a help message uh, showing us the usage. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually use uh, Shovel to assemble our reads. Uh, so this is where Docker volumes uh, come in. So we use the volume so um, Docker has access uh, to the reads and that we can save our output from Shovel uh, to our host machine. So um, to do this, I'm assuming you're in the directory uh, which has your reads. And uh, we're going to have to supply uh, Docker uh, the absolute path to where these uh, reads are. So the um, easiest way to do that is um, to use the pwd command to substitute that in. That just tells you uh, your uh, current working directory. So um, let's write our, our docker run command. So it's docker run. And um, uh, to uh, use a volume, uh, we use the minus b flag. And the first thing we want is the um, path to the reads uh, uh, on our host machine. So we just do dollar uh, pwd to substitute that in. And the, we then want to specify where we want to uh, mount that to in our container. So I'm going to say the data directory. Uh, in practice, you can use uh, mount it to any directory you want in the container um, if the directory doesn't already exist in the container, that's not a problem. Uh, Docker will create it for you. Um, so you just need to um, put it at, at, at uh, um, a mount point. And uh, next, we then want our image name. And uh, then the command that we uh, want to run. So we want to run a uh, shovel. We're just going to give it uh, the one camera length, just to save us a bit of time. And OK, so the next bit is um, we want to specify our uh, output um, and input to shovel. And remember, we're running this command in our container. So the paths we're given here are the paths in our container, not the paths. Uh, on our VM. So if we spe first uh, specify the output directory. And remember, we're mounting at slash data. So uh, we want the start uh, of our output directory to be at slash data. And then um, we'll tell it to put in the output folder shovel out. This means that then. Um, the container finish, finishes running, once shovel finishes running, we'll find our output from shovel um, at our current working directory uh, on our VM within the directory shovel out. Uh, then specify the path to our input reads. So the first one, again, this is the path in our container, not the path on our VM. So it's that slash data where we've mounted. And the first one. And the second, again, at slash data. So yeah, that's that's what our command um, uh, looks like. So we, we've told Shovel that the input reads uh, can be found in the data directory in our container. And we've set our uh, output directory uh, to be within data so that when the container exits, um, our output uh, results will then persist at our current work in directory within the Shovel uh, out directory. Uh, OK, so if. Uh, we uh, run this uh, command now. I'll set it running because so it probably will take about 15 minutes. See, shovel uh, 
start running then. Um, so yeah, I will just let this let this uh, run. I mean, hopefully you've been a bit quicker than me and you might have got yours uh, running beforehand. So we'll just uh, uh, wait for this to finish and uh, then we'll take a little look at some file permissions with Docker. And then we'll do uh, exactly the same assembly, uh, but this time with uh, Singularity. So yeah, we've probably got about 15 minutes now. If you have any uh, problems or any uh, questions, you can uh, pop them in the Discord. So if people want to uh, run two things at once, so you've got the session running and it's sort of blocking the shell from you doing anything else, uh, you can open a new browser window and go to the same, uh, like you can go to the same virtual machine URL or log back into the, into the website uh, in a new browser window, and then you'll have two sessions at once. So you can do two things at once, or you can use a uh, screen or Tmux or put commands into the background using the ampersand like you would in any normal uh, Unix session. Uh, this is a, and one question is should be working in Conda. So should we, uh, no, you shouldn't, it doesn't really matter for this. This is like a separate thing. Uh, Anna, would you be, kind enough to demonstrate a new shell window, just like we open the website and then you take new pane. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, that's it. Um, I'm not sure I'll actually show it because of the way screen sharing works. I think it's just showing you. Um, oh, okay. Basically, you, are, you, you basically, <laughs> yeah, basically you just open a new browser window and just go to that URL up the top there and you should be yeah. all right. Um, in terms of the use of... Uh, there are some questions about... Uh, there are some other questions about Docker itself. What does the run v dash v command do? Uh, is it telling Docker to create a volume? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, exactly. That's what you're using to um, uh, yeah tell Docker to create the volume. And another question is: Is the uh, pwd colon slash data essentially telling Docker? to mount the volume which is used for the output files into our local working directory. So what does PWD uh, colon slash data actually do? Right, so yeah, um, uh, PWD, that's your current working directory on your VM uh, where your reads uh, should, should be in the context of this command. And then your um mapping that to the slash uh data um directory that is within your container so so that could be like you don't have to use um the pwd like sort of shortcut at runtime you could have slash home slash ubuntu slash nabil uh colon slash data would work as well you can just give it explicitly yeah, I'm just using a little shortcut to avoid um, typing out the whole path because you, sh um, you should use absolute as to where your data is um, in Docker. So I'm using PWD as, as a short way of rather me having to type out slash home slash Ubuntu and uh, 
so on. Why did we use 31 for Camus? Oof. Why did we use 31 for Camus? I mean, I just gave it a Kama length, but uh, this is uh, not so much about the biomathematical analysis as just showing you how to run something. <laughs> 31 is just a default number. If the sequence have to be only from the web, how will I use the data that I have in my computer? Oh, that you can uh, you can run with your own data. I'm just uh, yeah grabbing some fast uh, keys for you just to have a go at running the software. If you can, yeah, you can you can run with whatever data you want to. I think yeah, Lee's saying that he always has to use the sudo command before Docker. So I think that's, um, yeah, if you've got a client VM with um, Docker um, installed on it, um, I think you have to sort of add your, add your user to Docker to um, uh, not have to put sudo in front of the Docker command. Ah, okay, thanks. That's helpful. It was certainly much quicker to download um, the container uh, than in the in the VM. I'm trying to catch up with you, basically, Anna. You 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 went you you uh, you, you went ahead, and it was. It, I thought it was never going to download. Yes, yeah, so it was a bit uh, tight on time today. No, no, I appreciate that. At the same time. <laughs> <laughs> well, the code's all on your on your GitHub site anyway, so yeah. Excuse me, uh, I feel like it's not happy about the we get command. It's, I don't know, I tried just downloading the reads and it printed out a lot and a lot of like no such file directory or resolving the FTP and unable to res like command we get not, I'm just really confused. It's a, <laughs> it's a lot of feedback of like, don't do that, but I don't know what I did wrong. Um, Anything that's, sound familiar? That's strange. Uh, did you copy in uh, the command from the from the GitHub? Yeah. Um, it doesn't have the dollar sign. It should just be w get yeah, space uh, with the FTP link, and it's not two lines. It's just one line. W get space and the FTP um, URL. Okay, you, you uh, posted, you sent me a message with the links, but there are two lines, which- No, one... no, that's, that's yeah, that's, uh, please go to the, to the GitHub and copy from yeah. that as proper plain text because, um, because Zoom chat will just do whatever, it won't honor yeah. um, line breaks or anything, it'll just do whatever it likes. Yeah, and I, um, basically just use this option, like the little uh, thing that opens up that says copy, and then I just use that, correct? From the GitHub. Yeah, yep, um, but you, you you shouldn't include the dollar sign. Hmm. Yeah, so yeah, this is an important point to clarify that when you're seeing these um, commands on the GitHub, that the dollar sign in front, that's just indicating the command prompt. So yeah, yeah don't type in the dollar sign. Mm -hmm. um, don't, uh, copy and paste um, from like the chat or from like the PDF presentations. Um, copy and paste uh, you know, from the markdown in in GitHub because that's plain text. It's yeah. It's, it's not pasting <laughs> what I copied. I don't know. So is it is it in your in your clipboard? Is is that bit look like, okay? Um, wait. Let me check that. Yeah, so, so then we get and then yeah. Yeah, if you close your clipboard and then uh, on the command line do Control Shift V, it should paste it. And it just does this single uh, read number. 
005 forward slash SRR and so forth. It just, <laughs> it's just that. It's very weird. So it's not the it's not pasting the whole command. It's not the command. It's just a bit from in the middle of the entire thing. Okay. Um, it's very, very odd. Not sure how that's happened. Um, Is it because when you just actually um, like Neanderthal just like type it the entire thing, but then it it just also was not happy about what I did, so. I might have included a typo. I don't know. Um, if you if you copy if you copy from the GitHub page, yeah. it will take both lines. So it'll take the it'll take the line for for both files. But you you I had to paste them in one line at a time. So if you press if you use that little copy icon, yeah, it tries to put both lines in, both we mm -hmm. get lines in, and I mm -hmm. think. I think it struggles with that. So I, I just copied and pasted from, from the GitHub page the first line. Yeah. And then and then went in and pasted it in and then it downloaded that file. Mm -hmm. And then I went in and got the second file and did yeah. the same. I'm trying that. It's like the, the just copy and paste command doesn't work. Um and the in the virtual machine, just like command V doesn't doesn't do anything. Oh right, control try right mouse click shift V. Sorry, shift control V. Yes, or just use the menu from the browser at the top. So edit paste that yeah. will work. Okay, let's try that. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Thank you. Let's see. Okay, it's downloading it. Okay, I think this should. Yeah, then I'll just do the second line exactly in the same way. Uh, okay, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, there was a question in the chat about how to upload data from local computer to the VM. I think Tang will have to tell us how to actually do it, <laughs> how to feed it from from the from this uh, terminal. In general, uh, you can just um, you, you know, if you're on a normal climb VM or whatever, you'll just have a file, FileZilla kind of thing, and you just transfer the files across, or you might mount a directory from somewhere else or something like that. Effectively, it's not, the thing to remember is that it's not that Docker or anything is like rooted to things coming from the web. It's that we're using wget to download a file onto the local disk, and then Docker is just using that like a normal file. Yep, Tang to the rescue. He's got, uh, he's just pasted the documentation and right at the bottom of the documentation, there is a section of how you can uh, upload files uh, onto your cloud VM that you have right now if you want to run your own data and play along with it. Now, where are we in the pipeline? It's up to, it's remapping back onto the contig. So it's actually finished the assembly and it's just uh, checking itself. Yeah, Which I think it could only be a few. So it's like the third stage of it. So it's actually uh, coming, almost going to finish out. Uh, if you are still stuck trying to pull from Docker, I would probably just kill it at this point. Yeah, there might be a case to just try, try again later. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, in, in, in essence, we're going to rerun through all of this with singularity, uh, which may, well, yeah, you'll, you'll get, which is more or less the same step. So you'll get a vibe of what's going on. Will you have another chance with singularity? And, and of course the VMs and the material is still there, so you can come back to it. Just to check, I've understood the dash V dollar sign pwd colon slash data makes the data directory in the container equivalent to the home directory it takes the input from there and places the output there so it's not no. to the entire home directory it's um taking your 
current directory, your current working directory, and uh, mapping that to um, slash data. And yeah, it, it, it'll, it's, um, it will make the data directory in the container if, say, if that, if that directory doesn't um, already exist. Yeah, I kind of touched on this in my talk that this thing of having the Docker uh, container trying to play with the file system can be a bit tricky with all of these volumes. Everyone's quietly watching Shovel Run, I suppose, at the moment. It is right at the end, another two minutes or so. This, yeah, this should run to completion as long as it doesn't run out of memory for some reason. <laughs> is there any way to see which point your run is? Um, not really. You've got all of the output uh, from the from shovel being spewed out onto the shell at the moment. Um, it, the, the program itself doesn't tell you like how far along it's gotten or how much time is left. That's just down to the tool itself. Any other questions so far? Uh, I warned you all this would get difficult fast. But if everyone's able to get to the point where they're running shovel to Docker, having never seen it before, they're doing really, really well. Yeah, it, it is difficult, this. If you're finding this, this hard, that's, that's it's, uh, it, Docker does take some getting used to. Yeah, so this is done. It's doing a final polishing of pylon, so it's pretty much finished. It should uh, should just run through these contigs, and it should be done. So if you go to the GitHub, um, it will uh, the GitHub for Shovel. You can see the different steps that it does. It's actually a fairly intense and complicated uh, genome assembly pipeline, sort of. Uh, question is, can this be run in the background in HPC? Not really, because of the way Docker is. You're not going to, what we're doing right now, you can't take the Docker run and then just wrap it up in a, in a, in a batch script and just execute on your HPC you will probably not work. Uh, but you will see a solution with, with singularity. We're going to just jump into that now. That'll be more applicable to, to, um, to HPC. Where do I install Docker in my PC, base or a specific environment? Uh, Docker doesn't install in base, like as in Conda, it's installed system-wide. It actually has nothing to do with, with Conda per se. Yeah, so I probably confused things by mentioning uh, Conda base, um, but yeah, this is it's nothing to do with Conda. And if you're um, looking to install uh, Docker on um, like a Windows PC or Mac, then uh, you just install uh, Docker desktop. Thanks, great, the GitHub. All right, excellent. So I think in terms of time, and now that this is done, um, Let's yeah. have a quick squiz at um, let's have a quick squiz of the output and then probably try to rerun it with singularity. We've got a pass over in yeah. enough time, I think. Um, so I'm just gonna very quickly show you the uh, so this is our um, shovel out uh, folder that uh, we uh, created. Um, so something to notice is this. Uh, folder is not owned uh, by Ubuntu, it's owned by root, because uh, Docker runs as the uh, root user 
So this can, you know, sort of create um, some issues with uh, uh, file permissions. So if you sort of tried removing this directory, or if you tried, you know, creating a new file in this directory, you're going to get a permission denied message. Um, so uh, what I tend to do to fix this user permissions uh, uh, problem with the output from Docker is uh, I change uh, the user uh, back to uh, Ubuntu by doing something like this. Again, you can now see that this folder is now uh, owned by Ubuntu. So that's just something to bear in mind um, if you've got your output from uh, Docker and you're trying to interact with it and things aren't working as you'd expect them to and you get permission denied um, messages all the time. That's what's happening. It's because the folder is owned by root, not owned by your, your user, Ubuntu in this case. So, you know, to change, change it back to your user using something like a chown or a, a command. Um, so if you very quickly look and shovel out, see that the output from shovel is uh, in here. Can see our see our faster files. Um, so yeah, very quickly now, uh, we're going to try doing the same with Singularity. Um, so we're going to try uh, pulling the same image from Key, but this time with Singularity. So we'll see how well this actually works. And uh, we'll get a problem with uh, it taking too long again. So Singularity pull command, uh, that we're pulling a Docker image. Uh, um, key repo name uh, let's see whether this works okay so you cast image for me so that was probably why it was quicker for me because I didn't I was messing around with this yesterday um so you can uh, see that it's, uh, ooh, I shouldn't do this in the shovel out, actually let's move our image uh, to where our uh, reads are. Um, yeah, so for the uh, singularity exec command, I'm gonna show you if we run in uh, shovel, um, your uh, reads will need to be in the same directory as the image. That's just for the command I'm showing you. In reality, if your reads are uh, uh, anywhere within your home directory, uh, Singularity will be able to uh, access them. You just need to give it a uh, path. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna um, show you a few commands now quickly because we are running out of time a bit. So we can run the same commands before that we did with uh, Docker run, but this time with Singularity exec, uh, where we give the uh, name of the image. And then we can run uh, check. And that shows all our tendencies again. We can take a look at shovel help again. So again, singularity exec, our um, image name, and then a command, help, our help message. And uh, so finally then, um, we're going to then use uh, shovel to uh, assemble our reads. And this time, um, as Singularity binds the home directory um, for us, you know, this, this command is going to be uh, a lot simpler than um, what we had to do with uh, 
docker with um attaching uh, the volume and then uh, the input output um putting the paths in the container so um yeah command shovel is gonna look like this singularity set our image uh name and then it's just going to be the command for shovel again shovel i like the one came a length our output directory so this time because of the way um it binds our home directory um we can just um just call our uh, output directory uh, let's call it shovel out two and once singularity um finishes uh running we'll find the uh shovel out uh two directory in our current working directory and this time as well there won't be any issue with um user permissions you'll you'll see that shovel out two will be uh owned by Ubuntu, so you don't have to um, mess around with user permissions that you have to do with uh, Docker. Uh, then run our input reads. Uh, again, because of this way this uh, bind mount, uh, mount uh, works and our um, reads are in, in our uh, current working directory, we don't have to give the path. We just uh, the name of our reads in there so if your reads are in another directory uh, on your um, vm so as long as they're within your home directory somewhere you just need to give singularity uh, the path to where those reads are and that's the path on your vm not the path like within the container i mean it's it's uh, a lot simpler here to sort of um work out what you're doing it's it's, it's uh working more in a way uh intuitive way like you'd, you'd normally run uh software on the command line and uh, second read um so yeah that's it that's what our uh command looks like uh quite a lot um simpler than docker so if i set that running just uh, shovel off again, doing uh, the same assembly as before, but this time in uh, singularity. Um, so I realized that was a little bit quick because we're getting, we're getting a bit tight on uh, time at the end. Is everyone okay? Is anyone confused? <laughs> yeah, that went by really, really quick. Um, uh, so if you have questions, we can revisit any of it. Just, just pop a message in the containers chat. Uh, effectively, it's the same, and and you can see that it's much simpler than the Docker. Some people are now typing. So, yep. Yeah, I do appreciate that. Was the uh, lightning fast? Sorry. <laughs> So if I understand correctly, shovel is a Docker container. How do I inspect the contents of the container? Well, shovel is in a Docker container. Yeah, so in, in Singularity, what's happening is um, Singularity is taking that Docker container and it's converting it, um, that Docker image, and it's converting it to a Singularity image for you. Sorry, Anna, can I just clarify? So so when when that container was run it, it's got different it's got different packages within it so it's got spades and it's got fast q uh, fast p and stuff like that so how how do you when you're wanting to when before pulling that in and you're wanting to just inspect and to see what it's actually going to do how do you do that do you just go to the the github site yes yeah, so i would i would look at um the GitHub page for Shovel to see what it's uh, doing. Um, you can also uh, like uh, use Singularity 
shell to take a um, look inside the container if, if, if you sort of if you if you wanted to the navigation sort of works in a similar way to um, Docker. Okay, thanks. So one thing um, that I like to do is often with a lot of tools, they will have a Docker file on the GitHub repository or whoever created the container that you'll, you'll be able to pull out the, the Docker file or the singularity definition and you'll be able to see. And Anna showed it in her slides, the, you know, the pull from base, set up the environment this way and then run all this stuff to install. So that's a good way to dissect exactly what's inside it. Normally, uh, the, the cheap way that bioinformaticians build containers these days um, is that you, you take your build script, Docker file, uh, singularity definition, and you just tell it, hey, install mini conda in this container and then just do conda install conda create an environment of blah and then just start up that environment whenever someone talks to that container so you just deploy it through conda so your container inside your conda is just is uh, inside your container is just a conda inside the user doesn't see it it's all frozen they don't have to worry about anything but like uh, conda is a good way to deploy it if that makes sense Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, often it, it's sort of designed to be obscure because <laughs> that's what a container is, right? You're not, you're meant to not really worry about it. So if I tell you, here's a container and you just go, just type in, you know, exec shovel and you get shovel, you don't need to worry about the dependencies. Okay. If, if it's been written correctly, right? <laughs> we, we have to remember that anybody can make a container, by the way. So it's not well, necessarily Docker's fault if it doesn't work. If I've like, if me myself has configured it really badly inside. Yeah, no, that makes sense. The thing, I guess, what it is is, you know, essentially you're taking two fast queue files and you're 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 putting them through a pipeline of of things to do an alignment, and and it's just it's just I wasn't. It's not entirely clear until it's actually running about what's being used. So I can see on Anna's screen that it's it's done something with spades and then it did something with BWA. Oh, um, okay. Yep. But it, it was that just kind of what's under the engine, what's what what is it, how's it treating those two fast Q files? Oh, okay. Uh we got two minutes. I'll quickly just go go through it. I've put the link to the GitHub for shovel. So shovel is a particular uh yeah assembly pipeline written by Torsten Seaman. It does a bunch of things. It estimates genome size it uh strips that if it needs to it sort of subsamples your fast key files down to a depth of coverage of 100 trims adapters off it correct sequencing errors uh, then assembles with spades or something else that you pick um, corrects minor assembly errors by mapping the original reads back onto those assembled contigs removes contigs out of trash and then produces a final uh, faster file with some nice names for you to you know that you intelligible human readable names um that's all there on the github and all of the uh, dependencies are written there as well if you haven't used so i didn't realize this might be the first time people have actually used shovel itself the program i uh, might not be aware what it does so yeah that's very quickly what it does you could just if you want to just do spades you can just pull the the singularity or Docker container for spades and just run spades. And then you just get the spades output that you're that you're used to. And to be honest, it'll probably pull a lot faster. Yeah, no, I can see it now. I can see that it's got a whole bunch of dependencies in the in the container. So it's got spades and velvet and SAM tools and BWIA. So that's that's what I was really interested in, just trying yeah. to figure out what what exactly was in was in this shovel container. Yeah. Um but yeah, yeah, I can I can see that now. I can see the yeah. dependencies. And and you can actually dip into those as well. Like you can use your shovel container to serve you, you know, BWA or whatever, because that's that should be there in the container on the path. Uh, so you can do exec, you know, could uh, run and then just say BWA instead of saying shovel. Mm. Uh, would you recommend building your own container then? Generally, uh, if 
the idea of containers and workflows that we're talking about today is to reuse other people's code as much as possible. There are some repositories where people spend a lot of effort making it very easy to use and very um, like optimized and you know easy um, and sensible. So uh, the staff B repository that we've been using today is really good for that. For instance, bio containers is really good and so on. But you may need to, all of our projects are always a bit different, right? So you may need to tweak things yourself as well. So you may, but I would try to avoid building your own containers. This is more work. Uh, any other questions? Uh, any other questions on singularity and what and running this part in particular? What directory is bound to singularity? Is it where you execute singularity or where the image file is? Ah, oh, that's a good point. So it's it's your entire home directory that is um, uh, binded uh, to singularity. Um, but yet when you're um, well, but but for the shovel output you've done now, yeah. Uh, if I let's say I you know so you're running it out of Anna work I think isn't it? Yeah. So let's say I went back. I went back to the home and I did singularity exec. Uh, you know Anna work slash shovel and then did all of that. Where would it write that output directory? Yeah. So it's it's uh yeah it's writing the output directory um to where I uh, ran the command from. Yeah, so it'll be the current working direct, like where you execute the, the command rather yeah. than where the image is actually located. Uh, and you can try it yourself, actually. You don't have to run shovel to try it. You could take the same container and just tell it to do something like uh, touch, touch a file or, um, or just do an LS and pipe it. So, you know, you can play around. You don't have to run, run shovel again to try that out. You can use different commands. Anything else? Otherwise, I think we should.